One of the big principles that we have at Arcane is to say yes to the player. At the beginning of the game, you're faced with a choice between Corvo or Emily, and then you're faced with a choice of which pathway to take through this crazy non-linear space. Open the window, front door, back door, you know, like down the street, over the rooftop. And then on top of that, you're faced with the play style question. Do you sneak and try to avoid killing people? Do you sneak and kill as many people as possible? Do you just kick the front door in and fight your way through? In terms of the missions themselves, we wanted to do classic Dishonored missions where it's a highly defended location, it has its own character, it has its own nature, and you're going after a high value target. But we also wanted to give them some sort of epic theming, either fictionally or game mechanically, so that it just created like a completely memorable space to move around in. So for example, in Cracking the Slab, which is a level where you have the ability to go back and forth in time. You can literally move back and forth very dynamically between two time periods. The present, when the house is in ruins, or the past, three years ago, on the night of a special event, when the house is posh, candles are lit, music is playing, guards are walking around. It's a very different feel. The challenge for us was to create two and even three different levels that would be fun to play and where the player could go whenever he wants. In the Dust District, you have these raging storms that come about randomly. You have two targets there, two factions with very different ideas about what's better for the future. The other level that is very special uh, in my art is Clockwork Mansion, where the player can change the configuration of each room. Where you could throw levers and move the walls, floor, and ceiling around. You basically reconfigure the house like a Rubik's Cube. So you can do that not only to open up new passages, but also to lock enemies behind walls. You're trying to reach Kirin Jindosh, the grand inventor for the Duke of Sirkonos, and you're trying to unlock this uh, puzzle box of his house one layer at a time to reach him. Another one of our very themed levels is the Royal Conservatory. It's like a massive museum with uh, taxidermy animals that, that kind of gives you a view into like the Victorian idea of natural philosophy and science of the time. It just feels atmospheric and grandiose. What happens when uh, the player's uh, decisions meet this story-rich world is what we call emergent narrative. You can encounter a situation and react according to your morality, to your knowledge of the world, or to your impulses right now. And then you create your own story. If there's one thing that I want the player to feel about Dishonored 2 is that our missions, our levels, whereas they're not open world, they feel like open world. Given that in one playthrough of Dishonored 2, you probably see 20% of the game, it feels to us like no two players will have exactly the same path. We've put so much effort into having so many things to do, so many ways to do things, so many choices. I would like the player to feel like the possibilities are endless.